What's going on internet? IG back again today. And today I'm really excited to be talking about this topic. It's been on my mind for a while and I've been looking for an opportunity to, uh, to talk about it a bit more. MX Linux is gaining a lot of traction. And I'm talking like, it just seems to be purely anecdotal to me and with the very flaky uh, results of uh, DistroWatch's popularity rankings in terms of the site uh, and, uh, and who seems to be visiting what pages uh, according to those stats. And then also we will look up the Google trend. You can see that right now MX Linux is challenging Manjaro in its number one spot uh, for most hits per day over the last six months. If we go to the last 12 months, you can see that MX Linux almost has the same amount as Linux Mint, which is crazy to me. And in the Google Trend page, you can see that over the last 12 months, uh, the interest in MX Linux as a search term on Google has also gone up significantly. So why is this the case? What is MX Linux doing right that is leading to this kind of growth? Well, that's what we're gonna explore in today's video. Why MX Linux is so popular. Okay, now I actually went and did uh, a little bit of research in regards to why this is. So there is, a, there is a bit of my own opinion in here along with just pure facts about the distribution. Uh, now, I'll be cutting between some, uh, some footage here of MX Linux 18.1 and also MX Linux 17 that I did a review about. And I'll chuck a link in the description of that review as well. Uh, probably the cards. Anyway, why is MX Linux so popular? It, it is a bizarre uh, concept to me personally, as MX Linux, when I first came across it last year, actually, no, probably the end of 2017, it didn't really strike me as, as particularly unique at that point. Um, and it would seem to be a relatively uh, bog standard XFCE on top of Debian uh, based distribution. And, uh, and the more I dug into it, the more I discovered a, uh, a community behind it that had been passionate or and, and very much still passionate about providing Linux users with choice. And when we're gonna come back to that word quite a bit. As time went on, however, I discovered more and more about what made MX Linux unique some of the tools, the community, the uh, where it sits in the Linux ecosystem, all of these things lead to MX Linux taking massive ground in just the sheer uh, market share and interest in desktop Linux as a whole. And if I could summarize it, I would say MX Linux is killing it in the desktop Linux field just due to a lack of uh, pushing forward on a lot of the other uh, stakeholders uh, part. So first of all, I believe one of the most, uh, I believe one of the biggest reasons that MX Linux is doing so well right now is because they have a very close knit community, great documentation, and it's very easy for people to contribute and get involved. Uh, now we should never underestimate the power of a decent uh, set of documentation, the ability to quickly and easily get help for the distribution that you are running, and also to be able to contribute to the project that you have discovered. Uh, all three of those things build powerful community links and especially in the open source world, uh, anytime you can create a happy, healthy, thriving community of users that enjoy using what you have created, you're going to have an amazing Linux distribution and a popular Linux distribution on your hands because word of mouth is powerful. And if people feel like they can be, uh, they can also contribute in some way to a project that they love, they will do it. I just want to point out, first of all, that there is 174 pages to this manual. Guys, 174 pages of documentation is nothing to sneeze at. And I know that this is still in beta, but just the amount of details that they have available to their users without even going online, everything searchable, uh, chapters, all of that great stuff. This is one reason that uh, MX Linux users feel very looked after. Uh, and it goes with saying, again, choice. MX Linux provides uh, amazing choice to the end user about what they wanna do and how they wanna do it. Let's not kid ourselves. Most Linux users know exactly what they want out of their system. They're using Linux because they can change things. 
But there seems to be a trend in desktop Linux where most of the choices seem to be removed. And again, this is probably something that uh, was more an issue five years ago than what it is now in 2019. But I would say that MX Linux users definitely enjoy choice all the way down to what software they run, what desktop environment they run, uh, how they boot their system, whether or not they want to use system D is a huge one for a lot of Linux users. And MX Linux gives sensible tools and fantastic options to their users to let them use what they want to use, whether it's codecs, drivers, sound servers, display servers. They support as much as they can, they document as much as they can, and they give the user what they want. Never underestimate the power of choice in the open source world. Not only that, but when it comes to how much hardware MX Linux supports, they, they, uh, because there's such a lightweight base and a lightweight desktop environment by default, it means that MX Linux can run on basically anything. And in a day and age where a lot of distributions are dropping 32-bit support, a lot of older machines, the machines that most people start using Linux for, are losing support. Whereas MX Linux is still providing an up-to-date distribution uh, of the Linux kernel, a desktop environment in an easily installable package for those machines. And chances are it's more lightweight than all of the Ubuntu based distributions out there. So we're going to get to Ubuntu in just a second in terms of comparison, but I do want to point out how amazing these, uh, these maintenance tools are. Again, it's simple tools to cover things that a lot of Linux users have headaches with. And this is where it starts to come out on top when you look at a rolling release distribution. Compare it to Manjaro, it's more stable and you have more GUI tools to be able to manage your system, which new users and seasoned users alike appreciate. And also you still have access to up-to-date software uh, through MX Linux but you get a more stable base than what a distribution like Arch or Manjaro is going to give you. While Debian, the distribution that this bit, uh, that MX Linux is based on, while it's not the most recent uh, distribution out there in terms of up-to-date bleeding edge, when MX Linux uh, packaged um, Flatpak support into their distribution, they gave Linux users a lot more choice in regards to how they manage their software, and how up to date it is. Installing software from their package installer is as simple as a checkbox. They have categorized all the popular applications based on what their community wants into a simple checkbox list busted down by the genre of the software that you're talking about. Then they also give you access to their stable repository, the MX testing repository and Debian backports. So that in itself is plenty of places to find your software. But finally, they also give you Flatpak support. So the simple inclusion of Flatpaks hosted by Flathub built straight into the package manager here, simple checkboxes means that you can easily get your hands on up-to-date software for pretty much most applications slash programs out there. Okay, so here's where it comes to the real conspiracy theory slash deep dive part of the video. And I've got to give credit to KBD on the MX Linux forums for his thoughts that have kind of fueled a lot of the following commentary. So bear with me here as I run you through kind of why MX Linux has come to popularity at this particular point in time. Here's some ideas. So obviously we have a great distribution with great custom tools, a very simple install and, uh, and some great documentation and community. Well, there's, it's not exactly unique to MX Linux. So why now? And I would argue that, that the popularity of MX Linux really started to uh, be on the rise with MX Linux version 17. Uh, and if we take a snapshot of what is going on in the Linux world around this time, it starts to make a lot more sense as to why this distribution started to gain such a user base as quickly as it is. So, as I mentioned, this distribution proved to be a little bit more stable and a little bit easier to deal with than Manjaro. So you already took a lot of the rolling release crowd onto MX Linux. Not only that, this crowd was probably also the more technically inclined and knows what they like. So again, that ability to choose what you want. Now, Debian is also at a bit of a weird funk at the moment in that it's hanging out for the next stable Debian release. So Debian as a distribution on its own is kind of getting a bit long in the tooth 
at this particular point in time. And besides the fact it's not very easy to install or user friendly to get up and running the way that you want it to. So then that leads us to Ubuntu, which usually takes the crowd of, uh, or it usually takes the cake as the most uh, popular and easiest to install and get your head around uh, when it comes to Linux. Now, but we all know that Ubuntu's had a bit of a rough few years in that uh, they, since dropping the Unity project, um, a lot of people have speculated that uh, Ubuntu has struggled to make, uh, to make a meaningful contribution on the desktop uh, to desktop Linux in some years and as their releases have gone it's a little been a little bit hit and miss there's been some regressions there's been a lot of paper cuts along the way and a lot of previously happy Ubuntu users myself included uh, started looking elsewhere for a new distribution so then that leads us to Linux Mint which is of course based on the rise and fall of Ubuntu as a base distribution as the quality of Ubuntu desktop releases began to decline, so one could argue did Linux Mint. And with Linux Mint 19, as fantastic as a release added as it is, a lot of people were still plagued by similar issues that plagued Ubuntu's long-term support release. So all of this is happening around early 2018. Uh, now, you could argue, well, a lot of Linux Mint users could actually go and use the Linux Mint Debian Edition, which was always seen as their plan B. It was kind of their backup should Ubuntu go down the drain. Uh, but unfortunately for Linux Mint Debian Edition, there is, there's never really too much promotion or support or, uh, or at least vocal users for Linux Mint Debian Edition. And when people are looking to get up and running with a new system, they wanna make sure that they're finding the support that they need, which again loops back to where we are with MX Linux, where they have fantastic support structure in place with great documentation and plenty of people in the forums to help you out. Not only that, but Linux Mint Debian Edition is also not really a true rolling release in that it does uh, tend to play it fairly conservative and it doesn't have the most up-to-date software available. And this is my final point where we get to the, the power of the rumor mill in the open source world. I would argue that because of Ubuntu's uncertain slash unfocused future uh, in regards to what Ubuntu is prioritizing, what Canonical is prioritizing as a company, uh, how they're making their ends meet, whether or not they're profitable, uh, is all affecting the decisions that are being made about everyone's favorite Linux distribution as it filters down the chain. Uh, and this has resulted, in a lot of people's opinion, in a Linux distribution that is uh, not as high quality as something that, can, that is produced by a passionate community. Uh, now, I'm not knocking Ubuntu or Linux Mint in this video at all. They have made amazing contributions to Linux as a whole. But there is a, again, coming back to the power of the rumor mill, there is a, uh, there's a tangible effect that, or, or a difference that you can see in how Ubuntu is perceived by the Linux enthusiast. Linux enthusiast being the operative word here, as it's the Linux enthusiasts that have found their way to MX Linux. So in summary, the rise of MX Linux, I think can be boiled down to a confluence of events as KBD in the MX Linux forums put it. MX Linux matured as a distribution with a simple installer, a great tool set, being more stable than Manjaro, but still giving users a rolling release with access to up-to-date software. Debian is growing old and is not as easy to install. Ubuntu's had a rough patch over the last few years and the general image and trust of Canonical from the Linux community to a company is not all that strong right now. Consequently, that also affects Linux Mint, which used to be the darling of the Linux enthusiast community. All of that leads to a lot of Linux enthusiasts looking for a distribution that will give them the most amount of choice. And right now, that distribution is MX Linux. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about this whole situation and whether you think there are any other points that have helped MX Linux's rise over the last year or so. Like the video if it helped you out and uh, definitely share it around if you know people who think similar or different and we can continue the discussion in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all in the very next video. Enjoy your Linux, everyone. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.